Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. I want to start this video by saying hello to all of the new subscribers that joined me this last week. I am so, so happy that you guys have decided to join me and I hope that I continue to inspire you and you continue to be excited by what's coming to my craft desk. To my subscribers that have been here for some time, hi welcome back it's so good to be back i'm so so excited for today's video i know i start just about every video saying how excited i am for tonight's video but tonight i really am super excited so i went to hobby lobby today and i found a few things in particular that i was looking for so i'm so so excited for that and then i found a couple things that i wasn't necessarily looking for but i'm so excited i found so let's do a little haul and then we'll get into the crafts for tonight. Starting with this adult baseball cap in pink. This was $2.99 and I do not believe this was on sale. So I did pay $2.99 for this. Now you guys did see me make a, another Hobby Lobby hat, a yellow one, and I put a sweet little bow on it. I'll try to link that above for you guys if I remember. But I love that hat so much. I wear it all the time. I really, really like the way that the Hobby Lobby brand hats fit. And I think for $3, they're a really good price. So I had to pick it up in this really, really pretty pink color. Now, one of the things I did specifically go to Hobby Lobby for was one of these little tote bags. Now, most recently, you guys saw me make one of the ironic boats and tote bags and that bag came out so so good i love it i use it all the time however we are taking my daughter to a little water park that we took her to last month um kind of as our little final hurrah for summer so i did want to grab a little tote bag just to kind of throw some essentials into if we need to kind of just go out really quickly um for the day so from Hobby Lobby again, I got this small natural canvas bag. It was $1.99. And again, I do not believe this was on sale. So I do believe I paid $1.99 for it. It has two pockets in the front or the back. I would probably use that as the front. And then inside it is just an open pocket. I think that this is the perfect size and price at $1.99. So we're going to be crafting with this tonight. Now, the next two things are two things that I did not go to Hobby Lobby for, but I'm so happy that I found them. First up from the wood pile, these were $2.79 and they were full price. Although the wood pile things were 40% off, it has to be above, I think like $3.99 or $4.99. So anyways, this was $2.79. And they just say blank wood keychains. So it does come in a four pack. And you guys saw in my last video, I made a birthday card for my father-in-law. So when I saw these, they instantly just gave me a very masculine kind of feel. So we're actually going to be crafting with this tonight. And then next up, another piece I didn't know I needed until I saw it is this beautiful little unfinished wood frame. Now this was from the wood pile and it was $6.49. So this was 40% off and I think I paid just over $3 for it. So it does have the little double hook hangers at the top. And this is something we are also going to be crafting with tonight. Okay guys, so that's everything I picked up in my trip to Hobby Lobby today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into tonight's crafts. Okay, so starting off with our little blank wood keychains here, these do say they are 1.06 inches by 3.62 inches. And like I said, there are four of them in the pack. So the little keychain itself looks like this. Now this piece here is wood and it's like a darker wood. And it has this little, I'm sure faux leather like attachment and then just some silver hardware. 
So like I said, when I saw this little four pack of keychains, I just thought that these were so masculine. And since my father-in-law has a birthday coming up, I figured we could just make him a sweet little keychain to go with his birthday card. So I simply went through my little scrap bin and found the tiniest little piece of gold iron on. Now, because the carrier sheet is so thick, I'm pretty sure this is a piece of Cricut Joy iron on. I do not know for sure because, like I said, I pulled it from my scrap bin. However, just from, like I said, the thickness of the carrier sheet, I would say that it is. So in a really sweet font that I really like, I just went in and typed out GPA, which, you know, is kind of short for grandpa. And that was what I was going for here. So just trimming this to try to get it as centered on my blank as I can. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. I have my Easy Press Mini warming up to the side here. I'm going to start with medium heat, which is the two wavy lines. Now you could definitely bring in like a piece of parchment paper or butcher paper just to kind of protect your blank. Since this carrier sheet is so thick, I think it's going to be fine, and I really want to keep a really close eye on this. So I'm going to opt to not grab a piece of parchment paper. But absolutely feel free. So I would say I gave that probably about 10 seconds or so. However, I'm going to take and put that on my cold mat just to try to cool it down a little quicker because I want to see if we're getting any adhesion at all or. So it looks like we're on the right path, but we're not quite there. Okay, so let's see if that laid down. Okay, so I got a little bit of lifting on that A there. A little bit on the P, but not bad. So since this little carrier sheet is so thick, once it's down enough that I can kind of get that carrier sheet up, I'm going to try to get that up as safely as I can without ruining my design. But then once I get it up, I'm going to go ahead and go in with some parchment paper. And then that's when I'm going to go ahead and apply my additional heat, right? It's going to be a lot easier for this heat to kind of get directly to my iron on without that super thick carrier sheet to get through. Okay, guys, so here is how my little keychain came out. I think that this is just the sweetest. I am so happy with how this came out. And I think that these are great to have on hand if you need to make, you know, kind of a more masculine gift in a hurry, right? They might be something nice to kind of just keep in a drawer somewhere just in case. And another really sweet idea would be you could also cut out like the names of the grandchildren and put them on the back or maybe like their birthday, something like that. But I think I'm gonna stop there and I am so happy with how this came out. So let's go ahead and finish up our iron on and then we'll move on to adhesive vinyl. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do my little tote bag. Now I have to tell you when I was deciding what I wanted to put on this tote bag, 
I was really kind of torn. It took me a little bit of time to kind of decide the direction I wanted to go in, which normally isn't really like me. Typically, I kind of already have an idea, you know, in mind, or honestly, usually like 10 ideas in mind um, at any given time for like a certain type of blank. But I don't know, my initial idea was I really wanted to use, I wanted to use another iron-on sticker pack that I got from Hobby Lobby, which I'll show you guys in just a second. So this is the one that I wanted to use originally, and it just says mama and the sweetest little colors there. But I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it for the tote. I'm typically like all for like the mama stuff, but I don't know, I just wasn't feeling a tote with it on it. But I wanted to mention it and bring it in to show you guys something that I kind of realized in the process. So I've been kind of like just waiting to be inspired with this little mama iron on set. And for me, it's a little too heavy for like a t-shirt, right? So for me, this would be perfect for like a sweatshirt. So I've kind of just been holding on to it until like, you know, the fall or winter. And then my plan was probably to make a sweatshirt with it. But when I was looking at it for this project, I actually kind of realized that Anything that's like this that says mama, my daughter and I can both get like a set of monograms out of it because both of our monograms are AM. So although I wasn't inspired to use this as it is, as like necessarily a mama patch right now, I was super, super inspired once I noticed that we could get matching monograms out of it. So I just wanted to kind of mention that because you know, I've had this sitting close to my desk for probably two months now, and I never ever realized or put two and two together. And once I did, I was inspired by this all over again. So I just mentioned that to say, you know, if you have something that you're not necessarily inspired with, always just kind of give it a second look and try to see if there's maybe another way you could use it or be inspired by it. And typically, I feel like that kind of helps a lot when I can just kind of look at something a little differently. Okay, so with that being said, I did bring in this little trio of hearts. I picked this up at the same time I picked up the Mama one. This one was $3.99, and it is an iron-on and sticker. So I don't think I've used these yet from Hobby Lobby. Or maybe I have once. I can't remember. Okay, so I brought in the little trio of hearts and I think I'm going to do something with these. I'm just feeling that a little bit more and it's kind of giving me more of the feel I'm going for. However, you know, old habits are hard to break. So I am gonna put a monogram on this just because I love it. Now, my original thought was to go with this pink that I really like, I use it a lot and it always comes out really nicely. However, when I was getting a scrap for that, I noticed that I had a scrap piece of this puff iron on. And I used this a couple times, like in winter, on a couple of sweatshirts, and it came out really nice. So I went ahead and cut it in both just because I wasn't sure what direction I was going to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and get these hearts positioned how I want them. And I'm thinking something like that because I want my monogram to go right in this little corner here. So from reading the instructions, it says that there is an adhesive backing on this that you need to peel off. So you'll just peel off that paper and then it's sticky, right? So now it's a sticker and you could just leave it at that if you were putting it on something that didn't need to be ironed on. 
but because we are putting this on fabric and I do want this to last and be permanent, we are going to take it a step further and go ahead and iron these on today. Okay, so you guys will have to let me know down in the comments which monogram you think that I should have gone with or which color monogram you would have gone with. Oops, these did say bring in a cloth to press with. So I'm just going to bring in a little napkin that I have on the side here and just place that over my little stickers. And then I'm just going to bring in my Easy Press Mini and I'm just going to kind of press each little sticker for about 15 seconds or so. I would love for you guys to pause right now, stop the video before I make my choice and comment down below pink or blue. Either which one you would choose or which one you think I'm going to choose. Okay, now just turning my bag around, I'm going to press this now from the inside. Okay, so that's how my little heart placement came out. I think those are looking so, so cute. It seems like my edges are down really nicely, so... I'm going to leave that there for now. If I do notice, like as it cools, any of that's coming up, I will simply just put my cloth back down and heat it, you know, from the front and probably the back again. I could also try to get like in this pocket here, but I just don't think my Easy Press Mini would quite make it. So just keep in mind, you are going through two layers. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to bring in my monogram here. I am going to choose to go with the pink just because, I don't know, it was just kind of my first thought. And I think I just like the look of it a little better. I like how it just kind of ties in the pink from the pink heart. So I'm going to go with that. Now it's nice because it has a little seam here. So that'll really help you get your initials nice and straight. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that over for just a couple moments. Draw out some of that heat so we can pull up our carrier sheet and see how that did okay and there we go here is how my little initials came out and here is how my little bag came out all together i am so in love with this i absolutely love 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 the look of it and for a dollar 99 for the bag and the little stickers were 3.99 so for about $6, I have a completely personalized little tote for our little last hurrah of summer. Okay, guys, I have one more iron-on project to match this one, and then we're going to wrap it up for iron-on. Okay, guys, bring in my last little blank for iron-on. I have this sweet little hat from Hobby Lobby. And like I said, I really like the hats from there just because they fit my head very nicely. So same exact process as our little hearts there. This one is a perfect match for 
the little white hat that is on my tote bag. So I thought, how sweet would it be to just have a little matching hat, right? So I'm just going to bring in this little sticker and I was thinking about putting it there. I just kind of put it on the bill of the hat and I don't know, I like that too. And it's really nice. I, I really do like these little iron on patches because they are really sticky. So that's nice because it gives you a lot, a lot of wiggle room, right? I could also put it like back here. That would be really cute. But I really like to kind of have it front and center because again, I just love monograms. So for me, I like to have it be the center of attention. So I think I'm going to go with that. That looks good to me. Now it does have this little paper here to kind of help it keep its shape in the store. For the process of pressing, I am going to leave that in there. I'm also going to bring in that same towel set and just kind of roll it up just to give me something to kind of press this against with my Easy Press Mini. And then just bring in another little washcloth here for the top. I'm going to, once again, just bring in my Easy Press Mini. I'm just going to kind of press this for about 15 seconds or so. And because I have the towel set underneath, right, I'm not in danger of accidentally burning my fingers here. You want to be really, really careful with that. Okay, and that actually got really, really nice heat. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and remove the paper now because I'm going to go ahead and press this from the inside, right? Now, this does have some type of like mesh material in here. I'm not exactly sure what that is. My yellow hat that we did did not have that. Just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and put my washcloth down. And once again, I'm just going to bring in my Easy Press Mini. I will press this for just about 15 seconds again from the back. Once again, now we're getting really, really super close to that adhesive. So I think this is really, really helping that sticker gonna stay down for us. Okay guys, and here is how my little hat came out. I think that is so, so sweet. And like I said, it is an exact match for the little heart on my tote bag. So I am so excited to have this little set here for vacation. All right, guys, I think that's all the iron on I have for tonight. Let's do some vinyl crafts now. Okay, so I think I have three or four vinyl crafts we're going to get done tonight. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one here because I am just so, so excited. Now this is some text, so it is gonna take me just a little bit of patience here, probably to weed this out.
Okay, so I got that all weeded. Not bad. I mean, like, not good, but not bad. Honestly, given that it's text, I typically, you know, expect a little bit of a fight. So, honestly, not anything that I wasn't kind of ready for and expecting. So, I just went in with a really pretty font that I like. And I just typed out this really sweet saying that I saw. And I wanted to make this for our bathroom. I think it would just like really complement the decor there. And you know, I just love sweet little words everywhere. So I think that this would just be the cutest little touch. In our primary bath. So just going in quickly and grabbing all of these little middles here. And as I finished weeding that up, I actually want to show you guys something really quickly I forgot. I found this at Target. It was in their like organization area and it just says swing top waste basket and it's 0.4 gallon and it just has this really nice lid that just kind of swings like that. I'm going to put a little bag in it. That's why I'm not using it yet. But I did pick this up for my craft desk and for $5, I thought it was a nice buy if you guys were in the market. Okay, so just bringing in a piece of scrap transfer tape that we used in last video. I'm just going to go ahead and lay this over my design and begin to burnish it front and then back. Okay, so leaving my design face down, I'm then going to just try to begin to pull back my carrier sheet. At this point, you want to leave your vinyl down on your transfer tape, right? So we're just going to very, very slowly and gently just kind of work our way down. Okay, and bringing in my little blank here. Now, when I picked this up, I originally thought that I was going to paint this. However, I decided against it. I decided to leave it in this natural wood state and go in with a white vinyl. I like that look and it's going to match kind of what is in that space now. However, you are more than welcome to take this in any direction you'd like. I thought about painting the sign white and then going in with like a colored vinyl, but I think that this is just a little more classic and a little more up my alley for the space. So with that being said, I'm just gonna try to get this as straight and centered as I can on my blank. Oh my goodness, thank goodness this was right side up. Not that it was the end of the world because I could always just move these to this end. But let me tell you, that is just like me not to check and to put it on upside down, so. Just FYI, make sure that your blank is right side up before you apply your vinyl. That will definitely help. Okay, so I'm just going to start by very, very slowly peeling this back. It looks like it's laying down very nicely, but you don't want to mess it up right at the end, right? So just keep a nice steady pace. And there we go. Here's my little sign. It just says, you're the best and I'm the luckiest. I think that this is so, so sweet. And I am so, so happy to have this. 
Like I said, I simply went in with a text that I liked and typed it out. You could absolutely take this in so, so many directions, but I just think the cinnamon is the sweetest. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, so bringing in this really large frame, you guys have seen this on my channel time and time again. I'm not going to go into the whole spiel about it. However, we're going to go ahead and change that out today. So the first step is just kind of removing the design that I had before. And it was that sweet, these are the days sign. which was so sweet, but I am ready for a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I like to take a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and I just pick a pattern one that I don't necessarily think I'm gonna use. And then I like to bring in the glue dots from Dollar Tree. That is my preferred method with laying my cardstock down. And like I said before, I really like this method because it gives it a strong enough hold that I don't have to worry about my cardstock coming up. But it's not so strong of a hold that, you know, I ruin the frame every time I want to change out my design, right? Okay, so just like that, I have a nice clean background for us to now lay our vinyl down on. Okay, so just moving that out of the way for just a moment, I do have a pretty big design here because, again, that is a fairly large frame. So with that being said, I want to have lots of room here. And as you guys can probably kind of make out, this is going to be the sweetest little lemon pitcher. And I don't know, just something about the little lemon for summer is, I think it's just a nice little change, right? It'll give my space a little bit of a breath of fresh air. So just going in really quickly and just getting some of the little details within my design here. Okay, now I definitely do not have a piece of transfer tape large enough for this in scraps. But I do have these two pieces of scraps. So I think between the two, I can make it work. I'm going to try. Now, like always, if you're just starting out, I would definitely suggest just cutting a piece of transfer tape large enough to fit your design. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to piece it together. However, I do it quite a lot, so I think that I will be able to manage. Now, just being careful of any areas where your vinyl is not covered in transfer tape, you don't want to burnish directly over those areas because you could accidentally scrape your vinyl and tear it. Okay, so just bring in my design here. I'm just going to try to get this as centered in my frame as I can. Now, I did accidentally lose one of my little leaves there on my carrier sheet. 
but no problem. I will go back in and lay that down in just a moment. But for now, I'm just going to kind of focus on getting this as centered as I can. Now you could absolutely bring in some parchment paper to help with this part. However, I'm just going to wing it. If it's not exactly centered for me, it's not the end of the world. This sits on a shelf in my living room and I kind of stack things like in front of it and around it. So like anything else I make, it definitely does not have to be perfect. Okay, so I definitely got this a little crooked. That was definitely my mistake. I definitely could have gotten that a lot straighter. However, I still think it's super cute and I am happy with the way it came out. So you guys let me know down in the comments below, would you have to redo this or do you think that you could live with it the way it is? I think that this is gonna be just fine for my space. I'll let you know once it's up, if it drives me crazy or not, but for now, I think it's just fine. And let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay guys, just bring in my last two little crafts. I'm gonna do these really, really quickly so I can wrap it up. You guys did see this in my last video. I picked up two of these little storage bins from the Dollar Tree. Now we did make over one last video and I wasn't sure exactly what I was gonna do with the second one. However, in that week or so since I've had it, I've actually come up with a great, great use for it. And I'm super excited to have it and I'm also super, super excited for the little image I found to label it. So it's kind of a win-win and I'm actually super excited to just have this like displayed in my craft room. This is just gonna be the sweetest little bit of storage for some embroidery supplies I have. So I have just a couple little pieces here that I accidentally ripped up. Okay, so I think I got everything. Okay, so this is just a little image I decided to cut for my little container here. And like I was saying, I'm just going to put some of my hand embroidery tools in here. I love to do hand embroidery, however, it is definitely something that takes a lot more time than I have for right now. So unfortunately, it's not something that I've kind of been reaching for or I really see myself being able to reach for at least until school starts again. So I think that this will be just the sweetest little storage container. 
and I am so, so happy to have it. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and do our last craft so we can wrap it up. Okay, so just like that, we are on our last craft of the night. And didn't I tell you guys I was so excited for tonight's craft? I feel like everything just came out so, so cute. I am so happy with everything. Now, as I say that, I am going to kind of wrap up my last craft here, which I feel like, you know, if you're a crafter, you know, the last craft typically is where it all kind of goes left. So let's see if I spoke a little too soon. Okay, so bringing in my last blank, I'm pretty sure I showed you guys this in a haul, but I got it, I want to say around, I honestly don't remember when I got it, but I got it from the Target dollar spot. It was $3 and it just says one count framed art rectangle. And it just says you, me, and a cup of tea, which I think is super sweet. However, I really just love, love, love this little frame. It's just the sweetest little ornate white frame. And I kind of just had it sitting on a shelf in my craft desk. Waiting for me to craft with it and kind of be inspired with it. Or honestly, I really wanted to just kind of put like a family photo in it and use it in my home just as a frame. However, it does have the plastic, um, like glass instead of glass, which I'm not going to lie, isn't my favorite. And also, I just haven't gotten around to it. You know, I don't have a photo printer, so I get my photos like printed at Walgreens or Target or something, and I just don't do it. I just always forget. So with that being said... In the meantime, while this little frame waits for kind of whatever it will be destined to be, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And, you know, this might just be its final form. You never know. So I just went in and simply found this little sentiment here in Design Space. It simply says, let them. And this is a great, great sentiment. So I am happy to have this in my craft space. Like I said, this has just been sitting on a shelf. So I am excited to actually put it to use and have it serve as, you know, some pretty art in my craft room. I just went in and really quickly cut out a piece of scrapbook paper that I thought would really go with the theme and just kind of complement the frame itself. Okay, guys, and with that final craft all wrapped up, I think I'm going to call it a night. That's everything I have planned for tonight. So I'm super excited that we got through everything. I have been recording for just over an hour. So I would say I've been crafting for probably just about an hour at this point. I hope that everything that I brought to my craft desk today inspired you in one way or another. Make sure you guys check out the description box because, like I said in the last video, I'm going to try to link the project down below. So if you guys want to create anything that you see in today's video, I think that you might be able to do that. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.